As discussed in part one, life was very good at this time for Grayson and Sam Hall. With their new baby Matthew, they were living in a seven bedroom apartment in downtown New York. While Grayson was tempted to enjoy motherhood, she was lured back to the theater. Practically speaking, money was tight. Grayson's first play after Matthew's birth was The Balcony. Starting with a small role, Grayson was promoted within a few months to a lead role as Madame Irma. She performed in this play for a year and got great reviews. There were two films that followed. In discussing them, author R.J. Jameson, who wrote Grayson Hall, A Hard Act to Follow, entitled this chapter Early and Regrettably Not Forgotten Films. Her first film, Run Across the River, was a low-budget film made by a friend in 1957 that was not released until 1961. The film that followed, entitled Staten in High Heels, was a risque film that cast Grayson as a worldly nightclub manager who transformed a carnival worker into a cabaret singer. What is interesting is there are pictures of Grayson from the film, but she often denied that she had been in it. A Broadway musical entitled Subways Are for Sleeping followed with Grayson playing the part that originally had been written to be a male character. Fun fact, Louis Edmonds, who starred as Roger Collins in Dark Shadows, was cast in the role. The writers did a rewrite and the resulting character was female. Grayson was cast in the role and Louis was fired. Grayson's part was a non-singing part, which was fine with her. In 1963, director John Huston was in New York casting an adaptation of a Tennessee Williams play, a movie called The Night of the Iguana. The film was to star Richard Burton, Ava Gardner, Deborah Carr, and Sue Lyon. Grayson auditioned with Houston but was very confused when she, he just wanted to talk rather than have her read a prepared audition piece. She even left early. Grayson got the part and was on her way for the location shoot in Mexico. After the way the audition had gone, Grayson was sure that there had been a mistake. She thought that Houston would see her and say, no, not that girl. She even wore the same dress from her audition to their first meeting so that he would recognize her. Houston greeted her warmly. Later in the shoot, probably over drinks, Grayson asked Houston why he had chosen her. He said, I thought you were a young Hepburn and that was the quality I wanted. There are many stories of behind the scenes drama during the filming. Elizabeth Taylor was there with then boyfriend Richard Burton, who is the male lead. Conditions were tough, but the group completed the shoot. All returned to their homes and their lives went on. Grayson went right back to roles in theater when she returned from Mexico, performing in three different productions in 1964. The first was The Engagement, which was performed at the Actors Studio Playwrights Unit. Very little information about this production is available. Next was another little known play called Walk With Me. Grayson's name in the play was simply Lady, and pictures show her in 19th century costumes. The third play is noteworthy as Grayson prepared for her singing debut in a play called No Strings. Playing a character named Molly Plummer, Grayson sang Love Makes the World Go. She was terrified of singing on stage. Grayson said that singing on stage was no less terrifying than being told that she would star as Lady Macbeth. In late 1964, there was speculation about the Night of the Iguana stars Richard Burton, Deborah Carr, and Ava Gardner receiving Oscar nominations. The only cast member who was nominated was Grayson Hall in the Best Supporting Actress category. Although Grayson was not predicted to win, she did attend the ceremony on April 5, 1965. The award went to Lila Kadrova for her role in Zorba the Greek. Even though she did not win, the Best Supporting Actress nomination was a plus for the actress. Grayson was considered for the role of Mrs. Robinson in The Graduate. Some speculate that Grayson had actually been promised the role by director Mike Nichols. The role would go to Anne Bancroft. A fun fact, after Night of the Iguana, Grayson was cast in That Darn Cat, a Disney film. She was concerned that Walt Disney would learn that she had played a lesbian in Night of the Iguana. If he ever did find out, it does not seem to have bothered Mr. Disney, who treated Grayson and her son Matthew very well. A major event in Grayson's life is an appearance at the Spoleto Festival in Italy. 
Giancarlo Minotti wanted Grayson there as many considered her an up-and-coming star. Grayson was featured in two plays at the festival, A Slight Ache and The Adjustment. As the festival concluded, the family enjoyed a vacation in France. Grayson was cast in Who Are You, Polly Magoo, which was filmed in Paris. When they returned to the States, Grayson found roles in TV series Bob Hope Presents the Chrysler Theater, Trials of O'Brien, The Man from Uncle, and The Girl from Uncle. What happened next for Grayson Hall? Being cast in a daytime soap opera called Dark Shadows.